What's going on coders? Welcome to this Python 3 video on solid design principles. In this video we're going to talk about the second letter in the solid acronym the O. And what does the O stand for? Well it stands for the open and closed principle. Essentially what that means is that a class or a function should be open for extension and closed for modification. So you might be wondering what does that look like in practice? Well, first we're gonna take a look at a bad example of what that looks like and then we're gonna fix it and make it comply with the open and closed principle. So for this scenario, what I've decided to do is let's imagine that we are writing a piece of software which allows the user to upload and kind of store away files that uh, they have on their hard drive to the cloud. So in this example, we're gonna use AWS and Azure Cloud as uh, the example. And it doesn't matter if you're familiar with uh, either of those cloud providers or not, but essentially Amazon Web Services has its own storage solution and Azure has its own storage solution as well. So the problem that we're gonna be solving is how do we upload a file uh, to those storage solutions via code in a way which complies with the open and close principle. So let's take a look at the wrong way of doing things. So let's say that we have a class called storage locker. And within that class, we'll need to have two methods. One is going to be the authentication method. So we're going to say dev authenticate, def authenticate rather, like that. And we're going to say that uh, self, and then we're going to say client. And for client, essentially, it, we're going to specify whether it, that's going to be Azure or AWS so that we can make that distinction if we're going to be uploading to AWS or to Azure. All right. And for the authentication, then we're going to just have a simple if statement. And we're just going to say uh, if client is equal to AWS, and then some code to authenticate against AWS. And then if not, then we're just going to say that client being equal to Azure and then some code to authenticate against Azure. All right, so we have that distinction there. Now, once we've authenticated, we may want to, well, actually in here, what we can do afterwards is we can say that we return client like that. And then what we might want to do is have a def upload. And in the upload, we're gonna say that we're gonna take self and file name, right? like that. And then we're going to make the same distinction here as well. So we're just going to copy this piece right here. And if client is AWS, then some code to upload a file to AWS and then some code to upload a file to Azure like that. Now, what's wrong with this setup that we have going on right here? Well, you might think that this is fine, right? For the time being, okay, you make a simple if else or if LF uh, scenario where you decide which cloud provider you're uploading to uh, so that you can authenticate and then you can upload the file. But the issue starts coming into uh, into here when we start thinking about adding another provider. So let's say that if uh, for some reason we needed to extend this class and 
have have it be able to support Google Cloud Platform? Well, then you might say, well, okay, well, afterwards we can just have uh, LF client Google Cloud Platform, and then you know some code, some code to auth to GCP, and this is where we've actually just broken the open close principle. Well, in fact, we've actually broken it a couple of times already because we're making this distinction uh, within the definition of, of the code, which means that we're actually modifying an existing piece of code as a, instead of actually extending it. And you might say, well, actually, we've just, we haven't actually modified the existing code, we've extended it by adding an, another else uh, or elif statement. And you would be correct in thinking that. However, this is a very simplified example, right? If you had a system which is 20, 30,000 lines of code, then just a simple addition or modification of an existing piece of functionality might actually break something that you know nothing about and you're unsuspecting. So the best way to handle this type of situation is actually to comply with the open close principle and completely start from scratch. So we'll scrap all of this, we'll leave it there for, for a minute and we'll start again down here. So in order to solve this problem, what we need to do is actually we need to look at abstract classes and abstract methods and that will be the most optimal way to actually structure our code. So what we're going to do is from abstract base class, import abstract base class and abstract method like that. And then what we can do is we can say that we're going to have a class called auth and that derives from abstract ba base class. And then we're going to have an abstract method in here and we're just going to call that authenticate like that. And it's just going to take self and we're just going to pass. All right. And then what we can do is we can have another class and we can call that class uploader. And again, we derive from ABC abstract method. And we're just going to say that uh, we're going to upload file like that in here and we're going to pass as well. So essentially now we've created a layer of abstraction for both our authentication and upload. And once we have this layer, what we could do is we can create a, a new class and we're going to call it AWS. And from that class, we're going to derive from auth and uploader like that. And then we're just going to say def authenticate. All right, self. And then we're going to just put some logic to authenticate against AWS. And then we're going to return return the auth client. All right. And then what we could do is we can write a another uh, method in here. We can call that upload file and it's going to take self and it's going to take file name um, for the file that we want to upload. Then we will just put in some logic to upload file to AWS and then we're going to return the status code status code of that upload transaction that's just occurred. All right. So now we've created this class AWS and this handles anything AWS in terms of authentication and uploading. Now we can then just go ahead and pretty much copy that and say that this is Azure instead of AWS. And then we just put some logic that relates to Azure in here. 
And that makes things a lot clearer because we have these base classes that we know these are like the methods that we need to have uh, to which will allow us to actually upload and authenticate against a cloud provider. And then all we have to do in these specific classes is actually just to overwrite those methods, put in the logic that we, we care about, and then uh, move on with our lives. So essentially this is allowing us to extend the initial code base without actually modifying it. So if we wanted to look at the GCP um, problem from the beginning, if uh, your manager told you, oh, well, please extend this to work with uh, GCP, then all you have to do is create a new GCP class, add the respective logic for GCP like that, and you're off to the races. You're done. That's it. And uh, it makes for a much more readable, much more user-friendly code base. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys have learned something and you've enjoyed it. Please do leave any questions or comments uh, that you may have in relation to the video down below. And I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to be taking a look at Liskoth or DL in solid. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.